we're now in an interglacial. Think about how much ice is in the world today. Think about the average temperature. Think about the world as it is today. And we're going to take that as a type and we're going to say, okay, this is an interglacial. What is a glacial, a full glacial? Well, let's go back 15,000 years ago. And now we'll say that will be our model for a full glacial. More than double the amount of ice on Earth today. Sea levels 400 feet lower. Uh, you know, uh, latitude shifts, tree line shifts, all kinds of shifts ecologically, environmentally, uh, geologically, and so on. Can we find? Can we find an analog for our modern epoch, the Holocene? Is there somewhere back there we can look and go? Oh, okay. Look, there it was, uh, just like uh, it is now, a Holocene, an interglacial. And the answer is not really. We thought we had some, and then we learned more about them, and we discovered that in a lot of ways they're a lot more complicated than we thought. But in any case, what it appeared is that by the 70s, by the mid-70s, the idea was we can't seem to find an interglacial that lasted more than eight or 10,000 years. Well, we've already been in the, the Holocene epoch for at least at least 10,000 years, maybe 11,000, maybe 12,000. So we've already experienced a period of interglacial warmth that's at least as warm or at least as long, if not longer, than any other analog that we can discern within the record. So that was one thing. Like, well, if this is if, if we can use the timetable that we've the legacy timetable of glacial interglacial cycles that we now have access to in in the seventies, it would seem to suggest that we're at the end of this interglacial, you know, because we don't find any you know a lot of periods that we thought were were analogs to the Holocene were six thousand eight thousand years long, right, ten thousand years. Well, we've already exceeded that, so that's number one. Number two is that as the planet came out of the Little Ice Age into the, uh, to the current, the modern warm period, in the late 1800s, early 1900s, the planet warmed up and was con considerably warmer in the 1940s than it was, say, in the 1850s, right? So it's warmer in the eight, up to the 1940s, but then something happened, <clears throat> and the direction of the global average temperature took a dive. And for the next 30 years, <clears throat> the planet was actually cooling. It didn't start warming again until the 1980s, right? So roughly the time that World War II is over, up now to the mid-70s, the average temperature, as they were able to discern it, it, it to the level of precision that was able, they were able to measure in the 70s, and and of course now it's it's confirmed. I mean it was it wasn't an uh, artifact. It really was cooling for about thirty years. So, and interestingly, there was a, gl a glacial, a mid twentieth century glacial expansion as a result of that cooling. So here's what they're here's what they're thinking. Oh well, the climate's been cooling for thirty years, or by then you know twenty years, twenty five years anyway. Anyway, so at the same time. There's evidence that seems to imply that we should be at the end of an interglacial epoch. So my point, what's my point in all this? My point is that there may have been some legitimate justification for concern that is wholly absent from the global warming scenarios. That's, I guess, my point. Um, the global warming scenario, of course, grew out of work from the early 20s, even back into the 1800s, uh, that showed that carbon dioxide had the ability to capture thermal heat and re in one, at one wavelength and then re-radiate it at another wavelength. Um, and then it was also realized that, you know, we're increasing the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Now this, nobody that I've seen across the spectrum of beliefs about the global warming scenario, as remember, it used to be called global warming when it was first proposed in the late 80s, early 90s, it was mm -hmm. global warming. Now, it's gone through sort of this iteration of various, it went from global warming to climate change to climate disruption, and now it is the climate crisis, right? We're in the midst of a climate crisis. Although, as I'm sitting here now looking out the window, it's a beautiful day in North Georgia. I've got a big flock of birds 
out there in the bird bath and, and feeding at the bird feeder. Uh, probably four or five different species of birds that I can see right out my window. Um, beautiful blue sky. Uh, I don't know, somehow right now I'm not getting the impression that we're in the middle of a climate crisis. And so I pulled it up. I pulled it up in 1969. Ehrlich wrote in the New York Times, we must realize, unless we are extremely lucky, that everyone will disappear in a cloud of blue steam. Excuse me. Blue steam in 20 years. I misquoted Ehrlich on that. But, oh, uh, so 1989. That was, Paul, that was Paul Ehrlich in 1969? What, what what was the reference? Was it a book? I I read a book by him about that time. It, it was uh, uh, an article that he wrote in oh, no. uh, August tenth, nineteen sixty nine. So I'm sorry, pink pink mist. That's uh, my that's my Rambo movie uh, <laughs> so, uh, swap out there. Okay. Blue blue steam. Blue steam. Okay, yeah. Due to blue, the heat. So yeah, blue steam and pink mist. But what happens if you get the blue steam and the pink mist together? Well, then you have a, a gender reveal party. I, I I give up. I don't know. Oh, I don't know. I was thinking maybe <laughs> maybe you really would, we really would have a climate crisis then. But maybe we would. Uh, the blue steam, blue steam. Okay, what? I don't. Remember. I read the population bomb. It was about that time, nineteen sixty nine. I do not remember anything at all about blue steam, but maybe blue steam. It's such a strange and odd prediction. But it, that that hysteria is still wound up and 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 uh, imbued into our cultural discussion of everything, whether yeah, it's yeah. whether it's immigration policy, whether it's how we govern our agriculture, mm -hmm. our our you know the 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 money that we spend, the way that, you know people are are aren't having kids because they're scared to death of having children into a world that's going to disappear into a cloud of blue steam at any minute. Any minute, yeah. And, and it's just, is to me, it's a tragedy. Well, and I I would 100% agree with that. And and I uh, believe that part of why, what we're trying to do here is to show uh, and make information available to younger people that you know, have been brought up and they've been indoctrinated into this climate crisis narrative since preschool, since kindergarten. Um, and all the way through the whole educational system, they're told the same thing over and over again. And they're not being told, they're not being given the full picture of what's going on. And I think maybe we should dive into a few things uh, as far as some of the issues, well, uh, uh, sea level. For example, let's see, I, I had something here uh, regarding exactly that and the variability of sea level. Uh, okay, let's see. Here we go. This was, uh, this was a paper that was published. I'll just make a short reference to it. Uh, let's see. This was November of 2022 issue of the journal The Holocene. It's called The Holocene is our modern geological epoch. Right, and, and the official starting date is now precisely placed at 11,600 years ago. Uh, this was uh, called the Mid-Holocene Sea Level Change in the Arabian Gulf. Okay, it was a team of six Earth scientists who, who wrote it and uh, said, uh, let's see. So this total it was a six-person team, and what they did was they found evidence in the, uh, for a higher than present ocean level in the area of the Arabian Gulf. And uh, this I'll quote from the article here, the mid-Holocene sea level high stand is a well-known phenomena in sea level science. Now this is in 2022 and they're acknowledging that there is this well-accepted idea that sea levels have been higher than now. And I'll read it again here, the mid-Holocene, Okay, go back. Holocene, 11,600 years. When was the mid-Holocene? Well, that would be five, six, seven thousand 7,000 years ago. That's mid-Holocene. Okay, so they're talking here, and this is, I'm quoting directly from this peer-reviewed scientific article, right, by six PhD scientists who 
made this study, and what they found in uh, the Arabian Gulf confirmed uh, this point that they're making when they say that the mid-Holocene sea level high stand is a well-known phenomenon in sea level science. Yet the knowledge on the high stand spatial and temporal distribution remains incomplete, right? Here we study the southwest coast of the Arabian Persian Gulf, where a mid Holocene sea level high stand and subsequent sea level fall may have occurred due to the Earth crustal response to meltwater load. Um, so that particular study, uh, let's see. So here's, so I'm not going to go into too much detail. I'll just quote here what, what they found. And this is a quote. Okay, directly from, from the, the paper. Following the analysis of the proxy data, the sea level high stand was at 1.6 plus or minus 0.4 meters. So 1.6 plus or minus 4, that means it was up to possibly 2 meters, 2 meters higher than now, which then would mean a high stand of over, uh, that the sea level was over 6.5 feet higher than now in this particular area around five. Let's see if they give the date here. Yes, they do. The high stand lasted from approximately 6.7 to 6.0 thousand years ago. So we're talking about, you know, basically a thousand to a 1500 years roughly before what we now consider the beginning of history. That's not a long time ago. I mean, in, in geological terms, that's Boom, that's a snap of the fingers. So we go back 6,000, and I other, other studies come up with slightly different dates, which one would expect, slightly different elevations. But what is accepted is in the middle of the Holocene, sea levels were higher than now. And in this particular study, it showed that the sea levels appeared to be, as I said here, um, what did I say, is up to six feet or six and a half feet higher than now. Okay. Um, and it said the high stand lasted, uh, yeah, uh, lasted from approximately 6,700 years ago to 6,000 years ago. Other regional studies cited by the authors, such as the Australian, one conducted by Australian National University, propose a high stand in the amount of two meters. Okay, so two meters would then be, uh, well, let's, yeah, two meters. Yeah, two meters. So that's, oh, but then get this. Uh, and that of the ICE-7G models up to 2.8 meters. So these are different studies. One study then came up with, with uh, 2.8 meters, and that would translate into over nine feet higher than now. Okay, the difference is likely a function of crustal adjustment rather than absolute eustatic sea level rise nonetheless now what do i mean by that okay because because of the melting of the glaciers and the transference of all of that meltwater into the ocean basins you've got this isostatic effect which is the vertical movement of the earth's crust so when you're trying to determine in absolute terms well actually what is referred to as the r uh rsl the relative sea level you have to take into vertical crustal movements as well. How much did those vertical crustal movements contribute to this change of six to nine feet? Uncertain. However, they do say this, uh, that nonetheless, using the more conservative number of this study suggests a sea level high stand of at least five feet above the present level. Okay, now this, this particular study confirms and reinforces dozens of other studies that are showing the same or very similar results. That during the mid-Holocene, just prior to what we think of as the beginning of recorded history, the emergence of civilization in the Nile Valley, in the Tigris-Euphrates, in the Indus, and the first examples of monumental architecture, first examples of, of writing as a system of communication, and so on, would have come right on the heels of this. So think about this. Six, let's go five, six feet higher, right? Well, obviously that means coastlines, present coastlines of the world 
we're underwater, right? So if the sea levels have been rising precipitously since the end of the ice age, right? Ultimately 400 feet. So here's what you got to actually picture. Sea levels are down depressed by 400 feet. They rise rapidly because of the great meltwater pulses being discharged into the global ocean basins. They rise rapidly and then they slow down, but they don't stop at the modern level. They continue on another five, six, seven, maybe even nine feet higher, right? Then somewhere just prior to the beginning of recorded history, sea levels start dropping again. Now, if you are going to be a culture that sails the ocean, a seafaring culture, well, you need ports, you need to have all the, 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 the infrastructure to uh, launch ships, right? Well, you're not going to be able to have that until sea level more or less stabilizes, right? So as long as the sea level is dropping five or six feet, what's happening to the coastlines? Well, they're migrating seaward. So you build docks and ports at, at, at the coastline of seven, six, 6,500, 7,000 years ago. Well, after a while, everything's going to be high and dry. It's going to be landlocked, isn't it? So you're not going to be able to establish any kind of a seafaring or, you know, civilization until sea levels have more or less stabilized, which they did between more or less like four and 5,000 years ago.